Hi, you're still locked in. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And now rising to international fame in the mid-80s as a teenage choirister, Welsh-born singer and media personality Ella Jones has been entertaining audiences with his many talents since he first stunned the world with his angelic rendition of Walking in the Air. Now a perennial Christmas favorite, Ella has sold over 10 million albums and has recently released his 40th album titled Blessings. And now he's joining us now via video call all the way from London and a big greetings from Cape Town, South Africa. Alan, my friend, how are you doing this morning? <laughs> how are you? Uh, so Lovely to great. talk to you. Yeah, it's always awesome being able to connect from all the way across the world and I'm sure we're all excited getting us into the Christmas spirit. Now your career obviously punctuated with so many achievements, Alan, awards and of course accolades that it's pretty difficult to know where to kind of begin but I'd like to go to the beginning and uh, that starts with you singing as a young boy in the Bangor Cathedral Choir in Wales. So what was it like achieving such an international acclaim and of course fame at such a young age? Uh, it was mad. Um, I was only 12, you know, when I made my first album. So I had four years um, where I recorded 16 albums, um, went to school Monday to Friday, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'd be jetting all over the world. You know, I sang in the Hollywood Bowl, sang in the Vatican, sang privately for royalty, sang with Leonard Bernstein. So, yeah, it was a real whirlwind. You know, it was an incredible four years. And the thing is, there was no blueprint. So mum, dad and myself, we just muddled through it. I remember signing uh, a contract to Virgin Records and Richard Branson saying, I haven't got a clue how we're gonna sell your music. So we'll just sell it like pop music. And, and that's what they did. So it, it, we started to make sort of classical popular, if you like. Wow, it sounds like you were literally born from this. Now, over the years, obviously your career has encompassed TV and radio presenting, you've got acting on top of that as well, and a continued presence in the world of music, right? So where you have sold over something like 40 silver, gold, and platinum discs in total. So how on earth have you kept transforming yourself over the years to continue this amazing connection with your audiences? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm like the uh, Madonna of the classical world. Uh, <laughs> constantly reinventing. I'm not sure that's a good thing. Um, you know what? I've just been lucky. You know, I sang as a boy uh, and I've been able to do it as an adult as well. You know, this current album of mine um, is something that I've wanted to do for so long. Uh, but because of COVID and lockdown, it seems to have become a, an album for this time. You know, we all need to be able to step away from the normality of life and lose yourself somewhere. And that's what this album's about. You know, um, it incorporates uplifting words from all around the world, some uh, linked to different faiths like um, Muslim, uh, Quaker, and some not aligned to any faith at all. But at their heart, these words hopefully uplift you and take you somewhere else. Uh, look, you mentioned something about luck, but I disagree. When, when a man like you finds his talent, finds his passion, I think it goes far beyond just luck. But listen, some of your career highlights include something that I don't think is luck, but singing for the royal family and the Pope. Now, how do you prepare for such esteemed guests? I know I always get nervous on the big stage, but it can never compare to what you're doing. What are those like incredible moments that you have? What is it actually truly like? Um, to, to be honest with you, when I got the invitation to sing for um, Charles and Diana at their, in their living room in Kensington Palace, someone rang my dad and my dad put the phone down thinking it was uh, somebody messing around um, <laughs> but it was yeah I was really nervous because it was so intimate you know when I'm, I'm used to doing the big concerts and if there's 2,000 or 20,000 in a, in a venue then you know I, that's what I do that's my job um, it's a nice job but it's a job whereas if you're just sitting uh, in Kensington Palace sipping water um, sort of this close to royalty then then it's pretty nerve-wracking and I was only a little kid as well um, you know I'm an old man now I'm celebrating my uh, 50th birthday uh, after Christmas this year so uh, yeah um, not looking forward to that let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> what a ride it's been 50th birthday coming up and here you are with your 40th album release called Blessings of course and now I must say Congratulations. And of course, this is quite oh, a special project, not only because of the way it's been put together in the midst of the chaos of COVID-19 and the pandemic, but also because of the focus you've had on the, creating a musical experience that also incorporates, I'd say, multiple faiths, like you've mentioned. So yeah. tell me more about putting this sort of unique album together. Um, it was a nightmare, <laughs> to be honest with you, because I've got a, I've got about six or seven guests on the album, and I'm convinced that they said yes just because they had nothing else to do during lockdown. They were like so bored, so they said, "Oh, okay, yeah, well, I'll sing on Alan's album. Why not?" <laughs> um, you know, I've got, Dame, I've got Dame Judi Dench on the album, which is amazing. Um, she's a really good friend of mine, 
um, and she recites some Quaker words in a song. But to be honest with you, between you and me, um, Judy Dench could read the menu from a Chinese restaurant and it would sound brilliant. I've also combined the Muslim and the Christian world on a piece called Song of Our Maker with Sami Yusuf, who is one of the biggest selling Muslim artists in the world. And that song has had an amazing reaction all over the world. It's um, it's very anthemic. I have Susan Boyle on a track. I've got the priests from Ireland on a track. Uh, Brian Blessed on Silent Night. And you wouldn't expect uh, Brian to be on anything silent because his voice is massive. And, you know, yeah, there's also a very, very important guy called Harry Billinge, who's a, a D-Day veteran who I interviewed last year uh, in Normandy, actually. And he speaks just so beautifully about uh, the whole act of remembrance. And so he, he sandwiches two songs, if you like, uh, if I can help somebody into Let There Be Peace on Earth. And, I, you know, one of his lines will always resonate. He said, you know, to live in the hearts of those we leave behind is not to die. And, and every time he, I hear that piece with his words and the way he speaks, it's just so moving. Ella Jones, thank you so much once again for joining us. And what a joy and a treat being able to connect with such an absolute legend. Now that 40th album, Blessings, is available on all leading music streaming services. Happy festive. <laughs>